Greetings, everyone. My name is Eugene Park, and I'm a faculty in graph design at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, where I teach classes in data visualization and interaction design. In this presentation, I'll be talking about storytelling with data and motion graphics through a graph design practice and pedagogy perspective. In the data visualization class that I teach every year to seniors and grad students, every project that we do is an exercise in storytelling. For a long time, the outcomes of this class were printed posters or static web prototypes that presented several visualizations that consisted of curated graphs that all together told a unified story on a particular topic. And the inspiration to develop a motion graphics driven project actually came from a quote attributed to Paul Klee, where he simply said that a line is a dot that went for a walk. This quote is likely connected to his pedagogical sketchbook from 1923, where he demonstrated the dynamic and mathematical qualities of a line. But it also speaks to the versatile attributes of simple geometric shapes that are commonly used as a building blocks in data visualization. So a dot can be moved to form a line, and a line can be stretched to form a plane, and then the plane can be morphed into other shapes. And understanding this simple concept uh, serves as a foundation in which we can animate uh, data-driven graphics. Uh, finding uh, great examples of animated data visualizations um, can be quite difficult uh, because they're few and far in between. But when executed properly, applying animations can be an effective strategy to show changes in the data or show different layers within the data. So for example, this climate change spiral visualization created by NASA uh, shows rising global temperatures um, in a clear manner, but um, also presents itself in a very um, unique format. And then I'm just gonna fast forward a video to kind of show what I mean here. So in an effort to get our graph design students to explore how storytelling with data can also exist in a kinetic medium, I put together a project where they had to create an uh, animated video for the web that spans somewhere between one to two minutes. Um, and they had to explain a very particular topic using data as the primary content. Students were free to use publicly available data sets like the websites that we're showing here. Um, or any other websites, um, as long as they are from a reliable source. Once the students have selected a data set, um, they would then prepare the data through Tableau Prep, um, where they clean the data um, by identifying the specific categories or variables that they need for their analysis and reformatting it um, if necessary. Uh, once that is done, uh, then they will take the cleaned up data set to Tableau Desktop or a Python script um, if they're very proficient with programming. Um, and then they would analyze and visualize the data. This is where students will test out any hypothesis that will form the backbone of their stories. Uh, the rough graphs produced at this point will then be imported into Illustrator where students can polish the graph and storyboard their animations. And then in the final step is importing the assets from Illustrator to After Effects to produce the animation. During the storyboarding uh, stage, um, cognitive load theory, which is the concept that students have already learned from the user experience course, uh, can be applied. So students challenge, are challenged to reduce intrinsic cognitive load by breaking down the content and making sure that each scene doesn't present an excessive amount of data. Uh, students are also reminded to minimize extraneous cognitive load by making sure that the visualizations don't have too much detail or aren't too experimental. Through storyboarding, students not only get to plot out the narrative arc of their animations, but they also have the chance to work with figure ground relationships. And they are also expected to treat graphs as images to establish signifiers and metaphors that can reinforce the overall tone or message behind the animation. So in this particular sequence, the decision to transform a horizontal bar graph into a silhouette of a gun was a nice touch. And when presenting a dense graph or map, students are advised to filter the visual into smaller multiples, making it easier for viewers to process the scene. 
unlike traditional motion graphics projects, uh, data visualization requires intentional pauses to allow viewers to catch up and process what they see. So just like in any UX class, students have to test their clips with their peers to make sure that the pacing of the animation is appropriate. So in closing, this project brings together the formal qualities of graphic design, UX principles and methods, empirical thinking, um, animation, and storytelling, all into a one to two minute video. And the intention is to equip students with experience and tools to engage audiences with data beyond st static presentations. So thank you all for watching and I look forward to our discussion in New York.